am <laughs> I am Allison Cutting and I am with Community Services. We are a division of the Community Development um, with Douglas County. And let me just give you sort of some background information on how um, our a brief introduction of the Douglas County Older Adult and Transportation Services. So for over, I think it's now been like 25 years, we've been partnering with area providers to offer services to our older adult population. And then uh, transportation for older adults, people with disabilities and other vulnerable adults. Um, and so the goal of these programs are to support our, our residents and their caregivers um, to live with independence and dignity within our community. Um, the transportation services are designed to meet the gaps in our transportation needs of our older adults and, like I said, people with disabilities and other vulnerable adults. We do uh, make a distinction between there because obviously our older adult services are for people 60 and over. Um, some of them, they need to, some services, they need to meet eligibility requirements, but in general, those are for 60 and over. We have transportation programs that are designed for people who are under 60, um, who might have a either permanent or temporary disability, or some of our funding is for vulnerable adults. Um, so meaning people um, maybe in rural communities, um, low income, things like that. So the aim of those transportation services are to improve mobility by removing barriers to transportation services and also expanding options. Uh, so sort of the way the way that these programs work is Douglas County provides the match with the exception of match on vehicles. I just want to point that out. And we offer the grant management to ensure that the funds are used efficiently and in accordance with all the different requirements and that we adhere to our legal and regulatory requirements. Um, this hopefully reduces the administrative burden on our providers and allows you all to focus on providing the services and building the capacity. So our funding comes from state, federal, and local sources. Our primary funder is through the Denver Regional Council of Governments, also known as Dr. Cog. So you'll hear that a lot. If you're not familiar with it, Dr. Cog is not a is not a real doctor. It's um, you know an a organization that services the metropolitan area. Um, funding right now is variable and the amount is not confirmed right now, um, especially with the election. There's not much being passed at the federal level. Um, so what we are advising is for organizations to submit applications for what they perceive is required. And as the funding amounts become known, we'll work with the awardees to meet our residents' needs. Some transportation funds are apportioned based on Colorado's share of the population groups that meet those eligibility requirements. And some of our transportation funds are geographically based. So, um, you know, we, because these funding sources are, can be complex, please be sure to read the information that's provided on our application webpage. Um, and I can share that, although if you're here, hopefully you know where that is the, on the Douglas County website. Uh, if you look for older adult grants, um, it should pull up or we can provide that information to you. So please be sure to read the information provided on there and on our the application itself, which we'll go through and just hear a little bit. Um, Furthermore, because we are blending sources of funding, some of the programs may have different performance periods. Um, they will usually run on either a calendar year or a state fiscal year, which is July to June. Uh, we have a one-year funding with the option for a second year 
again, depending on the funding levels and when we know those. As we get closer to, um, you know, what our appropriation is and what we know that our, the amounts will be, we will again work with you for that. So again, I just want to stress, please read the um, the information that is available to you and please reach out to us if you have any questions. Again, if you are awarded funding, we will work very closely with you. And so we want it to get off to a good start. Um, and that includes in including the application. So I will let Jenny run through the actual application itself. And then I think wait, what we're going to do is go through the application. And then afterwards, if you have questions specific for the programs, we have some of our current providers here. They sort of know how it all works. If you're new, you're welcome to stay on and we'll answer any questions that you might have about the actual program and how that works and, and how well you'll get to know us. So I'll let Jenny take over from here. Thank you, Allison. I will go ahead and share my screen here. Did it work? Can everybody see? All right. Um, so um, as we were saying, and I will check here, um, this, um, this is the um, page that Allison was referring to. Um, and right here, um, we're having some technical difficulties, but the link, and I will send an email out letting you know when it's there, it will be there later on today. Um, so you will see the link here and it will take you. So that's where you will click to apply and it will take you to this page. Um, and this is some of the information that Allison was saying to make sure to look over. So here's kind of an overview. Um, with some really good information um, that I would recommend reading. Um, some some more information on eligibility and, and some of the re grant requirements. Um, here um, on financial, um, this, this kind of goes over some of the funding and also the budget worksheet, um, how to fill that out when we get into the application. So some really good information here that you'll want to look at. And I believe here's some contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to contact myself or Allison. And that's about it, nothing on the files. Um, so just wanted to point that out too, to definitely read that before um, you are filling out the application. Um, and so to apply, you click on this apply button and it will take you here. Um, if you do not have a, a, a login, if you've never done this, you'll just go ahead and create your account um, for returning users. Um, you'll just go ahead and, and put in your login information and then um, click, click on the uh, portal login. And that will take you to the page. So I have some notes here because it's not as user friendly as um, it could be, but it's uh, it's not too bad. Then you hit on create new application. Let's see here. You know what? Um, this, let me see, my application, my profile. Okay, actually, Um, I want to, let me log out. I wanted to show you what it will take you to in the beginning um, is where you're, you're going to need to update your profile. And the profile um, just basically asks your name, company, um, your information address, organization address, things like that. Um, so you would go ahead and fill that information out. Um, Let's see if I um, we can if I can update profile. It's gonna let me. Okay, this is not okay. Um, my applications.
and then it's going to take you to this one again. Um, so after you update your profile, you're going to have to log in one more time, which is a little goofy, but. Um, OK, here it is. Um, so here's the profile. Sorry, this is what I was talking. So you'll come in and then here's the profile. Well, you will you will go ahead and update. This is this is pretty much how it works. And I'm going to go ahead and put in a couple things. So it lets us move on. There's some required fields. All right. Great. So now our profile is complete and this um, this is the actual application right now it's untitled. Um, but when you um, go in and through this, you'll you'll pick your title. So um, whatever you're going to call your project, the name of your project, you'll be able to you'll see it in there um, after you start the start the application. So we'll go ahead and click there to begin. And then open. So this is. Um, the actual application. Proposal overview, pretty self-explanatory. Um, your organization name, then down here you'll pick what kind of um, organization you are. The best fits it. The total amount that you will be requesting. So if you're applying for multiple programs, um, like homemaker, personal care, you'll you'll put in just the total that you the combined. And here's where you'll go ahead and tell us about the services provided by your organization in general. So not necessarily related to the project, but your organization as a whole. Um, total individuals served by your organization last year. Um, Douglas County individuals served by your organization. And then here's where we get into this proposal. The total individuals plan to be Douglas County individuals plan to be served through this particular proposal and the number of new clients you will be adding. And then scope of work, and this is actually a three part question. So um, on all these questions, there are some there's some subtext. So you'll want to read and make sure you answer all the different questions. So this one asks about the organization's mission, a detailed um, description of the project and what exactly the grant funds will be used for and how it aligns with the priorities of the Board of County Commissioners. Um, public safety, transportation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, here's where you will get, um, you will, any specific areas, if, you, if you're if you only going to be able to serve one certain area, please put that there. Um, how long have you provided the services? And then your goals and objectives. Tell us about the gap in services. In the next question, um, specific populations you will be able to target and your plan for marketing to these um, populations. Um, a lot of the um, grants that um, Douglas County oversees um, has, they basically, they the more we can serve um, those with the greatest economic needs, social need, um, frail or rural, um, the the better. So explain how you um, 
what what your current population is and and how you plan to um, target these populations. Um, an emergency plan for critical services is the next question, and then any collaborative elements and partners associated with your proposal. Two part question, some subtext here, please include the following names and descriptions of your partners and describe how your project will strengthen community partnerships and utilize existing resources and expertise to increase the impact to Douglas County residents. Um, grant funds be used towards an existing program. So then there's a drop down there. Um, and then this is um, looking into the future. Um, will the program continue after grant funds are exhausted? So you can go ahead and um, answer that and explain. Um, and then does your organization have experience in managing grants with the projects project being proposed? So um, there's some different questions down here that you'll want to address. And again, the, the better you address the questions, um, that's definitely beneficial. Is your organization fully staffed? What project outcomes will result from your proposal? Outcome examples, number of clients, one-way trips. So you'll want to give an idea of at the end of it all um, what, what, what the outcome will be. And then we have some, um, some questions here um, regarding Douglas County's call center. Um, for transportation funding, please describe your organization's transportation operations, drivers, and preventive maintenance. So you'll get into that. Um, this is regarding purchasing the vehicle. So if that's um, if that's one of your projects, you'll want to answer those questions. And then down below, um, we get into financials here. Your fiscal year, other funds that you will be um, using, leveraging for this proposal. Um, here you'll want to answer this. Um, do Are you going to need um, full funding to proceed? If not, what would be the minimum amount required? And then here's another drop down where you'll answer um, the total amount of annual federal expenditures for the last completed year. And here is where you'll um, attach some files. So um, the W-9 form, tax certificate, your organizational budget for the previous calendar fiscal year, organizational balance sheet for the previous calendar of fiscal year, um, the organizational budget for the current calendar fiscal year, most recent recent audit if available, and any supporting documentation you feel would, would help um, your application. Um, so right now, um, I am going to, and I should have been doing this all along. Apologize. I'm going to go. I'm going to just show you real quick because um, it, it gets a little tricky um, down below. I, I want to make sure I uh, show you what the the submission looks like. Pop some things in here. Yes, I'm going to put yes there. So depending on um, your answers, you could get some additional questions um, coming up regarding that. Um, some explanations to that. All right. Let's find a, a file here. That's the only one that I need to upload. Um, I would recommend doing the other one. And then this is um, this is where I was wanting to get. So there is an application. Um, application goals are not required. Um, the uh, application budget, you will be required to do that. And it's kind of funny because it asks you if you did it before you actually do it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click yes. 
Um, and here's where the application budget is. What you will want to do, however, um, is save this draft before you go into um, the application budget. So we're gonna go ahead and save that draft. And then we'll go down here to the application budget. And here is where you will look to that, that financial piece that we showed earlier. You'll um, want to go ahead and in that area, it's um, it says to um, basically all that you'll need to fill out this in this portion is under contractual. Um, unless, unless, depending on your proposal, like the homemaker and transportation and things like that, um, it's usually in under the contractual and you'll go ahead and Sorry about that. Um, here, which are um, in transportation and one way trips, um, homemaker, other services like that, it's one hour. So then you'll go ahead and fill that out and put um, add rows for any other uh, proposals. Like if you're doing homemaker or personal care, you'll want to add rows and, and put one for each of those. So you'll do your budget. Maybe I need to put something in here before it to, to save. Um, and the neat thing about this is you can, you know, you can put however many units um, and then your unit cost and it will auto, auto calculate or you can just put your cost. Um, so we'll go ahead and save it. And here is um, where you can add notes. So if there you have any, um, you want to explain anything further, good place to do so right here as far as your budget. Um, save, and now our budget is saved. So now we return to application. This is why it's a little goofy, because then we're then it takes it doesn't really take us back to the app. It takes us back here. So that's why it's nice to save it beforehand. Do your budget, and then you're going to have to come back here, log in again. Oops. Profiles complete. So this was my title of my application because I um, project proposal. That's what it was. Um, I ended up titling it. So then you'll click on that. Then we're going to open it again. And then we'll find everything. So everything's saved. My budget is saved at the bottom down here. Um, so then you like um, you can save it to the end. I keep editing it. It's there so you can work on it as you like. When you are finally ready to um, submit, you're going to want to mark it complete. And then when it's time to submit, that's when you will go ahead and submit it. So you can keep editing it. Even when you mark it complete, you're, you're fine. But once you submit, that's when it's, it's a done deal. Um, so then you go ahead and submit it, and then you'll receive a little um, notification letting you know that your application has been submitted. Um, and again, this, this, one, this, this uh, meeting, we'll go ahead and post it on the... Um, Older adult website, we'll go ahead and post it right down here in the applicant training. So there'll be um, there'll be a there'll be a section here if you want to look through and and pause this as you're going. Um, any questions on that? Did I forget anything, Allison? Kim? I don't think so. And yes, it is a little odd that you know you have to log in and then it closes out and then you log in again but don't worry that is that is part of the whole process um and then i do want to let you know so again how this works and kelsey i see you have your hand up um but as far as the award when you will receive notification like i said some of this it depends on the funding. So we're getting some of the funding from our local dollars uh, and that would be more on a calendar year. So that would be, I think our application is open until October 18th. 
and I should have had that written down, so I apologize that I'm not. Yeah, I think October 18th is when the applications are open until. And so for the calendar year grants, we will award those or you'll we you should know those, um, you know, late November, early December time frame. And then the other ones, again, we will for the ones that are on the state fiscal year, which would be July through June, that funding would be available or we would know exactly what that funding is probably um, at the beginning of 2025 is when we would award those. So Kelsey, you have your hand raised, I see. Yes, I just want to confirm since we typically apply for multiple pots, mm -hmm. one project for each pro for each program, one project, and then in those fields, we're talking about homemaker this, chore this, but it's all in one text box. Does that make yeah. sense? Okay. Yeah, no, I'm I not know what you're saying. We're okay. trying, so we didn't want people to have to apply multiple times for the different programs. So yes, if you could, um, yes, so multiple multiple services. So if you want to apply, if you are going to apply for a homemaker, that would be in the same, you know, spell out your homemaker. If you want to do, um, you know, transportation for older adults, you would spell that out also. Okay. So it's not, they're not individual projects. It's still just one application equals one project that we in the application are specifying which verbiage we're talking about each program. Correct. And okay. in, <laughs> then in the budget is also where you would put down the different sort of line items. Sure. Um, so that would also spell out that the different projects. Okay. All right. right. Excuse like me. I shouldn't say different projects for the different programs within that one project. Okay. And then I, I I'm, and then just confirming too that total amount is for all of the programs that we're asking for. Yes. Because there wasn't a drop down or anything to specify each program until we get to the budget line. Correct. You could. You could talk about it, Kelsey, in it, um, yeah. you know, saying you're requesting, you know, um, this much for homemaker and kind of go into what you're going to do and what you're going to provide and who you're going to serve and how many. And then and then also in the budget. So, OK, up to you. But yeah. And everybody real quick, I, I did want to let everybody know that the application link, um, I'll share it one more time here, um, is now up. Um, can everybody see it? Yep. Okay. So um, you'll go ahead and click on that page and then and then it should take you right right where it's supposed to, right to the application there. So I just wanted to point that out real quick before I forget. Any other questions? And as you're going through it, if something does come up, um, please feel free to free to reach out um, by email, phone. Um, however, and we will um, walk you through it. All right. Well, fantastic. Does anybody um, have any questions um, regarding the, the programs in general or anything that they would like to ask us or our um, current providers? <laughs> Yes, Carrie. You're muted, Carrie. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. Oh. So, um, in the past, of the people that have applied, how many people have not received awards? Do you know that by chance? Is it like 50-50? Is it, um, do most people that apply get granted something? So it honestly, it really depends on, yes, generally most people that apply, we try to work with them and get 
give them something. Sometimes if, again, like right now, the funding from the federal government has been flat over the last few years. So we have had some organizations choose not to continue with the grant because, um, you know, the funding, it just, the funding levels aren't there to make it, um, you know, that, that it works for them. Um, but yeah, we do, because really what we try to do is serve the most people that we can within Douglas County, you know, reach the most residents that we can. Some people can focus on maybe rural areas or, you know, they can, they can serve a different population that others can't. So okay. um, we really do try to work with as many organizations as we can. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So, and I know this is sounding a little, it's, we are, you know, we do try really hard to work with our providers and we do understand that sometimes, um, like I said, our funding is flat and we just don't have the ability to give as many people sure. as much as we can. So, but so, yeah, we do try to get as many, as many different providers as we can. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Nope. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. you, um, yeah, there. We are good. Thank you so much. We'll reach out. Okay, I guess awesome. Reach out, right, if they, we have a questions through the process. That fans, sounds fantastic. I appreciate everybody joining us and um, this will be up on the website and please let us know if you do have any questions. Everybody have a fantastic day. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.